Just before we go to commodities, Nigeria has been promoted by 15 places to 131 in the World Bank's ease of doing business ranking from the 2018 position at 146. This comes after the World Bank ranked Nigeria in the top 10 economies where business climates improved the most some weeks ago. According to the World Bank Group's Doing Business 2020 study, Governments of 115 economies around the world launched 294 reforms over the past year to make doing business easier for their domestic private sector, paving the way for more jobs, expanded commercial activities, and higher incomes for many. World Bank President David Malpa says governments can foster market-oriented development and broad-based growth by creating rules that help businesses launch higher and expand. And on domestic commodities market update, we will be talking about millet, otherwise known as guinea corn. Now, this commodity is a major input for the livestock feed and the brewing industries. The agriculture sector contributes about 22.82% to GDP in Nigeria. Agriculture and manufacturing sectors reported growth of about 1.79% and 1.22% each in the second quarter of the year. However, this commodity is not keeping up with the sector's growth rate. Well, let's find out why from Aisat Dahoud, one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. Hello, Aisat. Good afternoon and good to see you. Hi. So why is, the, me too, me too. Right, why is the production of uh, millet currently um, at 8 million tons per annum, keeping up with a uh, growth rate in agriculture and manufacturing? Okay. The price of millet is currently 75,000 naira per ton. Both the price and the production of millet has remained flat over the time. Technically, there's this relationship between price of consumer goods and inflation, and there's this sense of stagflation since mid-2018. I can tell you for sure that, let me also add that the nominal terms, these sectors, where agriculture and manufacturing sectors, they reported growth, but they actually grew at a, small, at a slower pace than the previous quarter. That is, you know, we can match this growth side by side with previous quarter. Not to also add that, yes, millet is a major input for uh, livestock feeds, but it's also consumed as a food. It's also used in infant cereals. Mothers these days, they use them for infant cereals. You also use it for craft beers, that's in the manufacturing sector. One would they expect that all these demands would drive production of millet. However, industrial consumption cannot be compared side by side with individual consumption. Not to talk of other constraints such as low input of fertilizer, infrastructure, you know, this problem, or how would I put it, transferring farmers engaged and farmers face a lot of limitations in, on the farm. It, that is, it affects the yield of millet, to say. So I can tell you in actual fact that you can't expect things to be, things, you can't expect production of millet to grow side by side at the same growth rate as um, the other sectors like agriculture and manufacturing. Livestock Feed of Nigeria PLC is a wholly owned subsidiary of UAC of Nigeria PLC. Now, its earnings have declined by 46.9%, that was in the second quarter, and its stock price has tanked for about 11.67%. Now, is this as a result of continuous decrease in yield and production of millet? Millet is one of the several major inputs used in producing feeds. Millet is one of the several major inputs used in producing feeds. We have other things to talk about like transportation costs, operational costs, finance costs that also reflect in the books in the books of a company, the PBT of a company, that's profit before tax or profit after tax. You have to account for this before you can now say, yes, a company has made actual earnings. So looking at the books of um, Livestock Feeds PLC in Nigeria, from our analysis, this steep decline in the corporate earnings is as a result of the huge finance cost in their book. And this can be attributed because the company reported profit Q1 2019. And 
This is as a result of the finance cost and from the company. The stock market recently has been experiencing this bearish sentiment and affected a lot of companies, most companies, and we can see such affecting the stock price of this company. So all these are responsible for the tank stock prices that the company is currently experiencing. All right, I said I think we have to leave that conversation up here. We sincerely apologize for that uh, poor audio output there. I said Dahoud is one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. How the world's top cocoa producers have backed down from a threat to suspend sustainability programs that they said confectioners and other buyers had prioritized over better for pay for farmers. Ivory Coast and Ghana, where more than 60% of the world's cocoa is grown, warned the industry earlier this month that companies have to either start purchasing beans at a price that includes a living income differential of $400 a ton or risk a halt to their social responsibility projects, the commercially sensitive programs that consumers increasingly demand. The premium would benefit all farmers while sustainability programs only reach a few. Since the implementation of the price plan in July, many firms in the cocoa and chocolate sectors have grappled with adhering to the new strategy as the premium cannot be hedged. Analysts have also questioned whether the plan will eventually cause an oversupply of beans and disrupt prices further. Uganda says its coffee exports in the 2019-2020 crop year will be about 16% higher from the previous period, boosted by favorable weather and expanding average as new trees mature. Coffee was long Uganda's single largest commodity export, but it has since been overtaken by gold, whose shipments exceeded $1 billion in the year to June. Uganda is also Africa's largest coffee exporter, followed by Ethiopia. The country predominantly cultivates robusta coffee. In recent years, the government has been pursuing a planting program to drive up exports with farmers giving free seeds to expand their acreage and to replace aging, unproductive trees. All right, let's wrap up the show with the update from the Nigerian equities market. Let's cross over now to Temple. Ashaju, hello, Temple. Well, earnings season is in top gear, but beyond the earnings, company like Forte Oil is impressing investors today. Tell us more. Oh, yes, uh, Chimeze, we've seen uh, investors in the, renewing their interest in Forte Oil given the takeover bid uh, from uh, an, a company uh, known as uh, Ignite Investments and Commodities uh, that is now buying over some 500,000 uh, ordinary shares of. 50 kobo each of uh, Forte Oil, and the deadline for this uh, bid is actually tomorrow, Friday, uh, the 25th of October, uh, while the whole uh, regularization process will commence on the 4th of November. So we've seen uh, this particular stock, Forte Oil, on bid because investors are taking advantage of that opportunity uh, because, again, the price at which it is, being, it is coming to the market is actually 66 naira. And this is a stock that is currently trading, at, uh, uh, that was trading before now at 16 naira, but given this particular exercise uh, that is coming up on this particular company, we're now seeing this company now trading at 17 naira, 60 kobo or thereabout. Uh, so it's on bid at this point, and that is what is pushing up the market. It has been able to mitigate some of the losses that we would have seen uh, in the market today, up some 10%, and uh, some millions of units of shares have been traded so far, Chimeze. All right, let's just hope that that impacts the general index at the end of the day. Thank you, Temple. And that's a wrap on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimezi Obi Wagu.